So all we have left to talk about here is some properties of limits and some algebraic examples. So in order to do that, we're just going to define a whole bunch of real numbers, um, two functions f and g. We're going to let the limit of f of x as x approaches some other number or value c be a, and the limit of g as x approaches that same value be b. Lot of jargon. Um, but I do want to mention that this all works. So this also works for x approaching infinity and x approaching negative infinity. So the first three I'm just going to lump together. For some difference product quotient, it all kind of maps on pretty intuitively. The limit of the sum is equal to the sum of the limits. The limit of the product is equal to the product of the limits. The limit of the quotient is equal to the quotient of the limits, provided that the denominator is not zero. Right? All pretty normal things that we've dealt with kind of throughout our course in algebra and now in IB as well. Well, we've got this constant k, just kind of like we did with the operations above. We can also, we have the option to pull that out front. So I can just take the limit of the function and multiply that by k later on. No different than I have above, right? I've just kind of taken the operation and pulled it outside instead. Actually, it works the same with this right here as well. Um, actually, this should be k times a. I'll just stick with my, with my substitutions here. Um, so it works with my exponents as well in number five. I can just kind of stick the power on the outside. I can take the limit and then raise it to the power and it all works the same way. It's worth noting that m over n is some rational number. And of course, I need to make sure that my limit is a real number. I can't go taking square roots of negative numbers in my limits and expect this to work out. It just, it just doesn't work that way. So I wanna make sure that this all still is within the realm of the real numbers, but otherwise I'm kind of free to manipulate my operations however I want. So let's look at a couple examples. Here's one of them. So find the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus one over two x plus three. Really a problem like this, which we kind of saw in the last section, in the last video, right? As x approaches infinity, well that signals to me that we're trying to find horizontal asymptotes. And we would know from our horizontal asymptote rules well, the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal so that my horizontal asymptote is at the ratio of the leading coefficients, which tells me that the limit of the function is also one half, That's, which is great. But let's actually show this using limits now. Let's actually use the algebra, the skills that we've um, accumulated here and solve this. The big tip here, the big key, when we get either an infinity over infinity or a zero over zero form, and I believe I've mentioned this before, it's usually a clue that we want to simplify something further. One of the things we can do to simplify further is to divide both numerator and denominator by their highest degree term separately. So this is all going to happen independently if like the degrees were to be different in the numerator and denominator um, I would do this all kind of independently. Something that we know from our prior knowledge, that's pk, or at least we should, is that the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is zero, right? As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, one over x is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's gonna approach zero. 
So let's get to work. If we want to take the limit as x approaches infinity of this expression, well, we've learned from our properties above that this is just equal to taking the limit of both parts of the fraction. Just like that. Well, this isn't particularly helpful yet because the limit of x plus 1, well, as x gets bigger, x plus 1 is just going to get bigger and bigger, right? This seems to kind of look like an, an infinity over infinity case, which tells us we might need to simplify further. So here's my trick. We're going to rewrite these both. Actually, let me keep the colors the same. We're going to re rewrite these both. by dividing everything through by their highest power. So in this case, I'm going to divide everything by x. And in this case, actually, we'll still divide by x. We could divide by 2x. It's all going to work the same way. It's kind of just maybe a personal preference thing. It doesn't really make a difference. So this is going to give us 2 plus 3 over x. And again, if this were like x squared, for example, um, you would divide the denominator by x squared. Whatever that highest degree is in that part of the fraction, that's what you're going to divide by. Well, we know also from our properties that the limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. So well, bear with me here. The limit of 1, well, as x changes, it's still always just going to be one, right? That one is not going anywhere. So the limit is one. And we just learned that the limit, or we just re reviewed that the limit of one over x is zero. Right? As x gets bigger and bigger, one over x gets smaller and smaller. So this is going to approach zero. And the denominator, again, same idea, right? Two is two, no matter what happens. Two is just always two. And then with 3 over x, it works like 1 over x. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 3 over x is going to get progressively smaller. We get to 0, we simplify, and we get 1 half, which is what we said we would get from our horizontal asymptote rules. So actually, I should correct what I had said earlier then. We don't want to divide by this coefficient. We just want to divide by the variable with highest degree, right? That's the only way we were able to get that two to show up like we needed to. It's the only way we were able to make that work. We're actually just gonna do one more example of this by talking about it in a sequence context. Don't freak out when you see sequences. There's no change here. Um, we're just gonna treat the general term of the sequence as if it's just a function. And we're just going to attach a couple words to this. So if my limit of the sequence actually approaches a number, and that number is a real number, we say that the sequence converges. Otherwise, we say that the sequence diverges. So if we hit a number, it converges. If we tend toward either positive or negative infinity, it diverges. Simple as that. Treat it like a function. No need to freak out over the fact that it's a sequence now. Sequences are just functions. Treat them like functions. So then this pro problem is no different than anything we've just done. It's no different than the last one we just did. So my first step is going to be to consider the limit of each part of the function separately. this. And again, we notice that we're going to end up with an infinity over infinity case. So let's correct that by dividing by the variable with highest degree. So we'll divide everything through by n cubed. And in this case, in bo on both sides, it just so happens that in this case, it works out that way on both sides. So when I make that correction, let's see, n cubed divided by n cubed is 1. 4n divided by n cubed is going to give me 4 over n squared. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. 
right, 2 plus, sorry, 2 minus 1 over n cubed. And again, the limit of a constant is just going to be that number. So this is just 1. 4 over n squared is going to work a lot like 1 over x did. So this is just going to approach 0. Right, as n squared gets bigger and bigger, the whole thing is just going to get smaller and smaller and closer to 0. Likewise, down here, limit of a constant is the number. And this expression, same logic, is going to tend towards 0. So my limit is 1 half, which means the sequence converges at 1 half. That's all we're dealing with here. Even though it looks different, follow the same steps we talked about. Anytime you see any sort of irrational expression kind of in this form, right? 1 over n, some number over x to some power, right? That's usually going to tend towards 0. So use that to your advantage. Um, although the notation looks a little bit complicated, a lot of times it just boils down to canceling things out.